so today is the first lab and <coughs> before we start the lab uh, uh, what i will do is that i will be discussing uh, a part of spirometry spirometry is a big topic but i will discuss a part of the spirometry so which will be uh, what you call which will be a part of your, of your theory classes also okay after i complete this uh, uh, afshan he will be taking over as the ta and he will be uh, helping you with the lab classes okay so <coughs> here in uh, what happens over here uh, what do you mean by spirometry spirometry is a technique which is basically helpful in understanding the breath physiology okay so device which is being used for recording the spirogram spirogram means anything say electrocardiogram spirogram these are nothing but the graphs of the physiological processes okay so electroencephalogram electroencephalogram means brain wave signals when you plot it so that plotted graph it is regarded as uh, electroencephalogram okay so similarly in spirometry the device it is called spirometer and the graph what we get it is called spirogram okay and the whole process of doing uh, this uh, breath analysis it is regarded as spirometry okay so <coughs> what it uh, what it does if you see over here spirometry it is a common pulmonary function test so it helps us in understanding the pulmonary function and it is quite uh, helpful in detecting the various respiratory diseases say for example this chronic obstructive pulmonary disease uh, asthma and dis uh, and other disorders that may affect the uh, breathing pattern of the uh, patients okay so <coughs> if you see it is an essential tool for diagnosing and managing the respiratory conditions okay so over here what happens is that if you see you will be having a device something like this so which is basically the spirometer and in the hand you will be this is the motherboard or basically the computer of the system and this is the main spirometer and within this spirometer there are sensors which will allow you to record the signals okay now what happens is that it uh, measures the flow of the air through a hollow section okay and uh, the pressure difference due to the uh, flow of the air it is being recorded okay so when we do the spirometry if you see the nose are being closed using a nose clip okay so that means why it is done this is done because we do not want any air to come out out of nose okay however under normal circumstances what happens we breathe in and breathe out through the nose okay so while doing the test we may unintentionally breathe out through the nose and and that will give us a false result to stop that this nose clip is being used okay <coughs> now this is the main chart or the spirogram and what are the parameters what you can look over here okay so the y axis over here it is volume and it is given by ml per kg okay and in the x axis you are having time now if you see this spirogram it has been segregated or segmented into three parts first one is the normal respiration so you want to measure the normal output of your breath then you will be having this forced uh, respiration which is basically called the deep breath okay we will take a deep breath and then we will breathe out completely okay take the deep breath uh, until the time we are uh, until the position uh, no, we are able to inhale okay so the maximum inhale capacity till the maximum inhale capacity we will be inhaling and then we will be exhaling to our maximum 
exhaling capacity okay then we will be having this normal respiration again so that we are can can measure the normal respiratory uh, processes now <coughs> over here if you look into the graph in the first column we are having four volumes okay so the normal under normal condition whatever we are breathing in and breathing out it is called as tidal volume it is called as tidal volume okay then inspiratory reserve volume the inhalational uh, inhalation of the air to our maximum capacity that is called the inspiratory reserve volume that means we can take that extra amount of air into our lungs okay and this is necessary when this is necessary when say we are doing any physical exercises say for example we are running or doing any other exercises okay similarly <clears throat> when you breathe out completely that extra volume apart from the uh, yeah, tidal volume that is called the expiratory reserve volume okay and apart from that there is another volume which is regarded as residual volume which cannot be measured using a spirometer so it is when we are breathing in breathing out so what happens is that even uh, we are achieving our the, after breathing out we are achieving the maximum breathing capacity after that also our lungs will be having some volume of air okay now that volume of air cannot be measured using this spirometer and that volume it is regarded as you know, uh, this residual volume then next comes capacities okay so what are capacities capacity if you look over here in the blue uh, color this thing i have uh, written capacity is equal to any combination of two or more volumes so volumes are the basic parameters then if you try to combine two or more volumes then it is regarded as capacities so if you see <clears throat> in the second column we are having two capacities first one is this is the inspiratory capacity wherein we are having the this tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume okay tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume so when we combine these two we get inspiratory capacity that means that is our maximum limit to inhale any air and when we combine the expiratory reserve volume and the residual volume it is called functional residual volume or uh, functional residual capacity okay so when we combine expiratory reserve volume and residual volume it is called functional residual capacity okay then when we combine this inspiratory reserve volume tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume these three in total that means the amount of air which we can inhale and exhale the combinedly all these three volumes it is regarded as the vital capacity okay so if you see over here what are the important things that we can measure from here first we can measure the inspiratory reserve volume tidal volume expiratory reserve volume after that we can measure the inspiratory capacity then vital capacity okay so this vital capacity plus residual volume uh, if you combine these two then we get the total lung capacity <clears throat> so uh, these are the parameters uh, uh, which gives you the information about the lung uh, physiology using the spirometer so tidal volume inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume and residual volume and from here uh, now from these uh, three one two and three tidal volume inspiratory reserve volume and expiratory reserve volume we can calculate the other parameters okay <clears throat> so then the combined uh, lung capacities so over here we are given with uh, the different uh, equations the inspiratory capacity what is it it is tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume okay like that we have this functional uh, residual capacity uh, which is regarded as the frc 
so it is expiratory reserve volume plus the reserve volume like this other capacities uh, whatever we have discussed over there it has been given <clears throat> now uh, this is another way of the representation then over here uh, this has been put because of this um, volumes so in male what you have residual volume of uh, 1200 is there okay on an average so males they have 1200 uh, ml of uh, residual volume expiratory reserve volume is approximately 1100 tidal volume is 500 and inspiratory reserve volume is 3000 on the other hand in females it comes out to be 1100 residual volume expiratory reserve volume 700 then tidal volume 500 and <clears throat> the inspiratory reserve volume 1900 so if you see the tidal volume in both the cases they are the same okay whereas in the case of inspiratory reserve volume if you see male have 3000 whereas female have less than uh, 2000 that is the 1900 okay similarly the expiratory reserve volume is quite low uh, here it, in male it is 1100 whereas in female it is 700 okay then <clears throat> in residual volume uh, section if you see it is 1200 and 1100 it is not much uh, difference okay so this i already showed you and uh, over here the example has been uh, given that you have to take uh, breathe in through the mouth and also exhale out of the mouth okay so what to expect during a spirometry test so as you will go your height and weight it will be measured then uh, nose is clipped to encourage mouth breathing okay so that unintentionally you do not breathe out through the nose okay then blow into the mouthpiece connected to the spirometer and you have to repeat it for three times and lastly you get a spirometer uh, creates a graph of lung function which is the spirogram Okay, so thank you in respect to the yeah, theory aspect. Now, Afshan, he will be taking over for the lab class instructions.